This is a demonstration of our concrete walls with openings. Uh, starting out, we're going to take a look at the global parameters and take uh, a look at the codes that we're going to be using. So if we look at here, we're going to be using Concrete ACI 318-2011. We have some of the older codes listed here, but this is the one we'll be using. I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to go to my Data Entry Toolbar and uh, go to the Materials tab. So in the Concrete tab here, we'll see that there's a list of different default materials for concrete. The NW represents normal weight, and the LW represents the light weight. We'll be using the four, uh, Concrete 4000 normal weight uh, with all the different properties listed here. Uh, we can adjust that or add to it, but this is the one we'll be using right here. I'm going to close that up. And to start drawing this wall, I'm going to go to this icon right here. And this is Draw New Wall Panels, and click on that. And I have several options for walls, masonry, wood, concrete, or general. We're going to switch to concrete. And we can see here on the right that it's some of the labeling options. The thickness is given here. We can adjust it, but I'm going to use 12 inches. That's a nice typical wall. And then here, material set. So I'm going to switch it over to 4,000 normal weight and push apply. Now, I, my icon changes, and I can click on the grid behind here. This is my drawing grid. And I can see in the lower right corner, as I, in this corner right here, as I hover over a grid intersection, I can see 0, 0, 0, and that's my start point. I'm going to have to define four points for my wall. So if I, I get to here, I'm going to get a 15 foot high, so it's going to be 0, 15. And then I'm going to move over here to about 20 feet over, so 20 feet in length this wall is going to be. And then I'm going to click on my fourth click, and I'm going to get a four points here. And I'll, my wall will automatically generate on my fourth click. I can right click to get rid of that icon there. And I can now start examining this wall a little bit. To do that, I just double click on the wall itself, and a wall panel editor opens up. Now in this wall panel editor, you'll see that things are drawn here as a rendered view. Um, I can click to get rid of that rendered view, and I see behind that that it has a drawing grid turned on. That's also toggle, toggle here with the drawing grid. I turn that on there. Now this drawing grid is now set up at half foot increments. I can start working with that, but it might also be easier to set up my drawing grid so that it's a little bit more useful for my openings. So I'm going to put in some increments here, so 3, 4, 5 comma 3, comma 5, and then I'm going to, that's my horizontal grid. If I push tab, I see that those grids create for myself. And I'm going to change this to be 15 at 1 foot increments. And I click on tab, and I see that the rest of the grid increments fill out for me. So this starts me out with a nice grid. I'm going to put a doorway in. And I'm, I'm using this draw openings. It's our default that when you open it up, it's already in the setting. If you lose that by chance, you can just click on this tab here, and it will turn it on. And I click on the leftmost corner of that opening and just drag that all the way to the top. This is going to be a 7-foot tall door. And then I'm also going to add in a window opening. So I'm just going to create this window opening right here. And then just right-click to get rid of that. Now, I, I can basically, at this point, uh, go ahead and put my boundary conditions in. So I would typically want to do my boundary conditions inside this wall panel editor. So I'm going to say click on the boundary conditions here, and I have options of pinned, fixed, free, roller. I'm going to do fix. This is going to be a cantilevered wall, so I'm just going to say apply, click on the bottom there, and right click and get rid of that. I'm going to also just create my regions so we can see them, and this region creator here will automatically generate our regions for us, so we can see that. I'm going to click back on render so we see it a little bit easier. And we see that there's some full height design regions, and this is what also in concrete or masonry we might call design piers. So we see full heights between the openings, and then we have some of these op uh, regions above and below openings here as well. I'm going to say OK. And then let's just review our wall design rules. This is what actually designs the walls. This is uh, the concrete rebar um, and some uh, miscellaneous information. So starting out, if I look at the wall design rules as we're on our data entry toolbar, we look at here, we see some vertical bar size. Uh, so you can tell the program exactly what size bars you want to use. Uh, we're going to use number sixes there. You can tell the, the program what size uh, spacing you want to use. So we're, the program is going to use start at, at a maximum of 18 and go down to a minimum of four. And it's going to increment between these different uh, spacings by two is what the what we have in as a default here. So that means it's going to go from 18 to 16 to 14 and so on.
Okay, the other thing you can do is set up your horizontal bar sizes. Um, just so we set up right here number fours. So that's going to leave that. And I'm going to also tell the program the spacing of that with the increments. I can also group walls together. So we only have one wall in our model, but if we had more than one wall, we could tell the program that it should be sized similarly amongst all the walls by grouping them together as designing. Um, I'm going to leave that off since we only have the one wall. If I go over to the concrete wall miscellaneous, I see that I can do things like tell the program where to put the outer bars. Should we put them uh, along the vertical bars or along the horizontal bars? And we can see that graphically a little bit easier once we look at the design. Um, should we be putting the bars on each face or just centered? And then what is the cover here? Now the last options here is the transfer in and out. Now when we were looking at the the detail, excuse me, the, the wall panel editor, we noticed that there was regions inside of the wall uh, above and below the openings. And you can tell the program that you want to transfer loads in plane and out of plane um, above and below those openings with just a check of those boxes. So if I check them, only the full height peers would be uh, be carrying the load. Um, that won't uh, that will just change the, the design. It doesn't actually change the stiffness, just the design of the reinforcement. So I'm going to close this here. And that, that was the typical design rule. And if we double click on the wall here, we can see that that wall design rule was being used as the typical. You can adjust that. If you want to have multiple design rules, you can just pick from this list here. So I'm going to say OK. And now it's time to put some loads. So I'm going to open up the basic load cases spreadsheet and create a dead load, live load. I'm going to do a win load in the X direction. Okay, and then a win load in the Z direction. And in the dead load here, I'm just going to choose the category so we can use our load combination generator easily for ourselves. So I'm going to go down to win load in the X direction and win load in the Z direction. And we'll see that here. So now to, for the dead load, I'm going to put the self weight of the, of the wall. So just by putting a negative one in here in this Y gravity, it's going to count for the self weight in the Y direction, um, vertically downward. I'm going to close this out. And then we're going to do everything else graphically in here. So uh, for de dead load and live load, we're going to put some distributed loads on here. So click on the distributed loads, and I'm going to tell the program to be in the Y direction. I'm going to say it's going to be negative point, uh, excuse me, negative two uh, kips per foot, and then it's going to run the entire length. So we leave the start location zero and the end location zero. And then I push apply, and all I need to do is just click on the top of that wall. I can do the same thing for live load, and maybe the live load's just a little bit larger, and I'm going to put that into the live load basic load case and click on the top of that wall. The next thing I'm going to do is the wind load in the X direction. So I click on apply joint loads and I go to the X direction here. And I'm going to say this is going to be 10 kips as the wind load in the X direction. Push apply and that load is applied. Um, the last piece is our, our wind load in the Z direction. Now the Z direction is in and out of the plane of, of there. So I'm going to show this in ISO so we can see this a little bit better. I'm going to go to the surface load for wall panels. So if I click on that, what we see here is I have some options. I'm going to choose the Z direction. That kind of helps us. That's in and out of the page. Uh, the start location and height I can leave as zero. The top magnitude here, I'm going to just call that to be a point zero four, which is going to be 40 pounds per square foot. And then I'm going to taper this. So the bottom of the wall is 20 pounds per square foot. The top is 40 pounds and it's in the Z direction and just push apply. And I can just click right on the wall and I see that I get a tapered surface load on that wall. So then I am done with all of my loading. I can see the different loads by just going up to the top here and toggling between them. Um, now it's part time to create some load combinations. So I'm going to go into the data entry toolbar, load combinations spreadsheet, and it starts out with no load combinations. And the best way to get started is using our load combination generator. This is a quick and easy way to do our loads. So you choose the region, you choose the code. I'm going to keep the ASE strength, that's a, for 2010, and I'm just going to say generate the gravity ones for us. So to say generate, and I see that I just get my dead load and live loads taken care of. And then I'm going to go over to the wind. Now for the wind, since I used an X and a Z directional, then I'm going to make sure to choose X and Z, and I'm going to say generate right here. 
And I'm going to close this up, and I'm just going to see here. I got a, a total of eight load combinations, some in the x direction, some in the z direction with the correct factors. So with all of this, I'm going to solve the batch. And I solve the batch there, and it runs through each different load combination. And our, a new toolbar pops up. I'm going to close my load combinations. The results toolbar pops up. Now, what's good to hear is to look at is review our wall design, uh, wall panel design. So if I open this up, I can see here concrete in, which is in reference to the in-plane results. And it gives us a maximum unity check, uh, gives us the shear unity check, and then some of our, our actual allowables here are listed out here. Or, and our actual string, excuse me, are listed here. And if we go over to our concrete out, which refers to out of plane, then I can see here I've got the maximum unity checks listed here, and I have my shear, and then again, our capacities are listed here. So what we'll do here, uh, once we once we review this section, we're also going to take a look at our concrete reinforcing. If we jump to that on our results toolbar, we see that there's a concrete wall tab. And this tells us what we've got listed. So it looks like a, predominantly we're using number fours at 18 horizontally. And it looks like we're using number sixes at 18 on each face. Um, and looks like uh, for both there. Now to see that more in more detail beyond this just uh, a nice uh, spreadsheet format, but to see that in more detail, what I want to do is look at the detail report. So what I click on here is the detail button on the side of the screen and then click on the actual wall. And here this starts out with what we call as a walled pan, uh, detail report. And this is meant to be a, a good summary of what happened in the entire wall. The top sort of echoes out exactly what we had put in. So we should be able to verify, oh yeah, I used number sixes at vertical and number fours. And you can nicely verify that. And as you scroll down, you get to see a picture of your region. So that's a nice way to verify what you're, what you're looking at with your results. And we can see here, uh, we've got all the same listed out uh, design results, uh, unity checks in plane and out of plane. Uh, we've got, so as we scroll down here, some of the reinforcements as well. Now, to look at this in more detail, for, uh, for example, if there's a question on what happened on region one, maybe that's the one that we're wanting to look at further, we can go to a uh, drop down menu at the top here and pick the region report. And I click on that region, and region one will be listed here. And this tells us exactly what happens in this region. It gives us more of a, a, a diagrams telling us the forces and uh, moments and, and shears. We also then see on the right side the code check information. And it tells us what, what was the breakdown there. We also see it, any deflection details. And as we go below this, then we get into a lot more advanced in-plane wall interaction diagrams and a really great detail below. So this shows us a lot more about uh, how to reinforce this wall in this section. Now this was for in-plane only, but if I flip over to the out-of-plane, then I get to see the same exact results uh, for this wall, uh, but in the out-of-plane. So we then see different forces and different code checks based on the out-of-plane results. Uh, we then also see two interaction diagrams, one for the interior and exterior. And as I scroll down, we get to also see that cross-section detailing. The other piece here, so I'm going to close this out. The last thing we can review for the entire wall for reinforcement is just to double click on the wall again. And inside of that wall panel editor, you get to see here the reinforcement drawn right on top of the wall. So this is another way to see this all listed out for yourself after you've done the analysis and design of that reinforcement. I'm going to close that. So thank you so much for viewing this, this tutorial. Um, and we are complete.